So Epmoc is um, almost over. It's over next week, but for me it's really kind of over now. I'm leaving town tomorrow for two and a half weeks or so. I'm going to be across the world and extremely sleep deprived for a while. So this is kind of it for me and Epmoc, and I'm feeling sappy. So this is my love letter to Epmoc. It's seriously been a transformative experience, and I just wanted to say a few words about that. Um, I started at MOOC not even knowing what it was, not even really knowing why I was doing it. It just seemed like a cool thing to do when I'm on sabbatical and I had time, so why not, right? Um, but the thing that's really standing out to me as, as why and how it's been so transformative is the connections that I've made through at MOOC. That's, of course, it's a connectivist MOOC, so that's not surprising, but... Um, that's what's going to last, I think. You know, I probably would have tried some of those tools. I probably would have learned about some of those concepts. I was already interested in openness and open education. Um, but the connections wouldn't have happened in quite the same way. So before AdMOOC, I had a Twitter account. I, I rarely used it. I certainly didn't use it in the same way that I do now. I mostly just shared some resources, things that I had seen and read things that other people had seen, but there was no connection. There was no talking to other people. There was just throwing some things out there and I never replied to anybody. It was just this very impersonal space for me. I never did a tweet chat before at MOOC. Um, my first tweet chat was one of the ETM chats and um, I mean, before that, I didn't really see how it would be useful to try to have a discussion in 140 characters. Um, that changed. I realized that it can be useful and it can work. I had a blog before at MOOC. Um, I did write in it pretty often, especially during a sabbatical, but um, I had almost no comments. I didn't really publicize it. I only had comments from people I knew, mostly. And I, I pretty much never, I can't think of a time that I actually commented on anybody else's blog which is silly, whatever. Um, so anyway, writing blog posts before spent like, it felt like I was just speaking to um, an empty room, like dark, maybe there was someone in there, but I couldn't really tell if there was anybody in there or if anybody was listening, because I had almost no comments. So it was a reflective space and that's what I wanted it to be. That's why I created it, was to be a reflective space, um, but it was no more than that, just for myself. So what changed? Um, well, with that move, there's a community. There's There was a community that was actually getting together and talking about the same things at the same time. Um, we were encouraged to comment on each other's blogs, and, and so I started doing that and realized how important that is. Other people started commenting on my blog, and we actually engaged in conversations through and across different blogs. Um, and I no longer felt like I was just speaking to myself, which made a huge difference. Um, what else? Um, the presentations for EdMOOC were interactive. It wasn't simply, well, most of them, it wasn't simply sit down and watch this, watch somebody else saying something. It was engage with it, have a chat, write on the whiteboards. Um, that made it feel much more like a community too. It wasn't simply being talked to, it was you know, to the degree that that sort of thing is possible on Blackboard, it was talking with um, the people who were presenting. And that, that sort of feeling was all throughout the course. It didn't feel so much like it was a, a hierarchical, um, instructor-led situation. It felt much more like a equalized community. Um, obviously, I knew who some of the co-conspirators were. I actually found out later that some of them were conspirators that I thought were just participants. Um, and it, that's telling that I couldn't really tell, right? That that um, participants were were so active in answering each other's questions and offering advice and suggestions that it really felt like we were all just discussing things together as opposed to listening um, to somebody else for the most part. How have I changed since at MOOC? That's huge actually, which it hasn't even been that many weeks. But um, I write differently in my blog. I have a very different voice because I feel like I'm actually talking to people. I feel like I'm actually having a conversation. I can even picture some of the people who might be reading 
my blog and um, it's sort of like talking to friends though I don't really know them that well yet um, and that's that's cool I really like the way that my voice my writing voice has changed in my blog it's less dry I think than it was before um, I'm much more willing to make comments on blogs obviously those inside of at MOOC but even those outside of at MOOC that you know, I'd read before, but I never said anything to those people, so I do that now. Uh, I use Twitter a lot, a lot. Twitter is now my favorite professional development, um, social media, whatever the heck you want to call it. Um, it's the thing I check first thing in the morning, before I go to bed, and see what's going on out there in the world of philosophy and education and openness and feminism and all that kind of wonderful stuff. Um, so yeah, that's just, it's become something that I use constantly, whereas I didn't really before. And I'm more of an authentic person on Twitter now than I was before. It, before I was really a professional, um, I don't know, personality. I didn't really have a personality. It was just, here's some stuff I found. You might find it interesting and that sort of thing. Um, so now I actually let some of who I am through on Twitter it's just better to make connections. Like, how can you connect to a resource person? Someone who just shoots resources at you. That's not... It, you don't really get a sense of who that person is. And I don't mind replying to tweets of people I don't know to start conversations. I never would have done that before. I just... Somebody tweets something interesting or something that I have something to say about, and I just reply. And, you know, it might go from there. It might not, but it could, and that's cool. I'm considering opening up one or more of my on-campus courses in CMOOC fashion, the way that Brian Jackson did with his high school class um, of philosophy. I'm looking into that, taking that very seriously, and I'm interested in doing research on connectivist MOOCs. Uh, in fact, I just turned in a proposal for a conference on uh, that idea, how to research the effectiveness of a connectivist MOOC, um, and if that's possible. Um, so that's an area that I would not have probably gotten into. I mean, I would have heard about C MOOCs and X MOOCs and all that thing. But uh, I probably would not have recognized the value of a C MOOC without having done it. And I certainly would not have gotten so into it that I want to do research on it. Lastly, vlog. I would not have done this. Without at MOOC, I don't think I would have just sat in front of a computer camera and recorded myself talking. I still think it's a little bit boring, but it's a start before I learn how to make these sorts of videos a little more interesting. Um, and the reason I'm doing it is because through my experience over the last few weeks, I found that I really get to know people better if I can see them and hear them as opposed to just see their texts. So text is fabulous. You get to learn a lot about a person through their writing, but uh, you get to feel like you're having more of a connection if you can see them and hear them as well. So that's why I'm doing this. So while I'd love to beg at MOOC to stay, I know it has to leave. Thank goodness the connections that I've made through at MOOC, I hope, are not going to go away. So I'd just like to say thank you.